Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat at uh, talagang hindi ako makatanggi dahil sinanay ako ng asawa kong wag tumanggi. <laughs> Maraming salamat sa Riva Luzon na siyang sponsor ng activity na ito na huling ginanap pre-pandemic sa pangunguna ni uh, Pastor Exley Miguel ngayon. Ang organizer, ang Trinity Bible Church, maraming salamat sa pag-organize muli ng ganitong very profitable na activity. At siyempre ang host natin, ang Kubaw Charismatic, ay hindi, reform pa na. <laughs> Nagduda na ako ng mayat maya palakpak ang narinig ko. Kaya maraming salamat sa Kubaw Reform Baptist Church sa kanilang constant hosting. ng ganitong mga activities. So, nawa ay pagpalain nito ng Panginoon. Ang paanyaya sa akin ay closing message, then in parenthesis exhortation, which I interpreted to mean preaching. Uh, kung teaching ito, kagaya ng kaninang dalawang nauna, ay gagawa rin ako ng PowerPoint. But I do a lot of PowerPoints myself, but the one exception I make is not in preaching. So, kaya... Uh, don't expect a PowerPoint preaching should be God and a man with a word to the hearers of the word, no cluster in between. Pero ngayong araw na ito ay araw ng kasarinlan ng ating bansa, araw ng kalayaan, kaya't ma, 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 natural sa atin na mag-isip ng ating mga bayaning ginamit para sa ating kasarinlan mula sa mga Kastila, mula sa mga Hapones, sa mga Amerikano, At siguro isang agad ninyong mapapansin, when you begin to think of the roster of our heroes, they are male-dominated. Uh, halos mga kalalakihan ang papasok sa isip natin. At kung makapag-isip tayo ng mga kababaihan, siguro Gabriela Silang, Melchor Aquino, uh, nag-research ako sa AI, binigyan pa ako ng Lea Salonga, uh, Uh, ngunit siguro ang hindi, isang hindi natin kilala ay si Josefa Llanes Escoda. Ayan, hindi natin masyadong kilala. Nakilala ko lang ang pangalang Escoda sapagkat nung ako'y nanunuyo pa sa aking asawa noon, nang siya'y dalaga pa, nakatira siya sa Escoda Street doon sa may Pedro Hill. Pero si Josefa Llanes Escoda, ay nakilala bilang mother of social service at nung panahon ng Second World War at nangyari ang tinatawag na death march, ang pagmarcha ng ating mga kawal, mga Amerikano at mga Pilipino mula Bataan hanggang Kapas Tarlac. Siya ay nakilala bilang Angel of the Death March. Kaya mayroon tayo mga kababaihan na mga bayani natin. Siguro ang mai complain ng mga feminist ay uh, it only affirms the bias against women in the fact that males dominate our roster of heroes. It affirms the patriarchy. Yan ang kanilang madalas sabihin. Ipinapakita lang na talagang mga kalalakihan ang inuuna sa lipunan at madalas ay kinakalimutan ang mga kabayanihan ng mga kababi kababaihan. So gusto kong magsimula sa paglalagay ng aking batayan sa aking pangangaral. I want to lay down my predicate before I even answer this present gender revolution that is afflicting our day. Uh, let me make myself very clear. I believe in the equality of men and women. Naniniwala ako sa pagkakapantay ng mga lalaki at mga babae. Pantay sila sa creation. Sa paglalalang ng Diyos, pantay sila sa pagkahulog sa kasalanan at pantay sila sa kung paano ang biyaya ay kumilos upang sila ay iligtas. So I believe in the equality of male and female. And believing in that equality means I insist on the equal dignity and value of men and women. But unfortunately, there had been in history And even remaining in the present day, those who reject that equality. May mga magsasabi, hindi ba obvious tingnan mo ang mga 
bagay tungkol sa physical, hindi ba mas malakas sa mga kalalakihan? At ang iba naman, ituturo nila ang emotion. The emotional stability of men should be well affirmed compared to the emotional quote-unquote instability of women. At marami akong ganyan pang naririnig, ngunit gusto kong sabihin that these so-called obvious facts are just to some extent without seeing the full picture of the matter. So I still believe nothing has convinced me otherwise as far as the equality of men and women is concerned. That equality means equality of dignity and value. Now, many gender revolutionaries blame Christians for the prejudice against women and their oppression both in history and still, at least in some regions in the world, uh, nananatili pa rin ang pangaapi, panunupil ng mga kababaihan. Hindi ko sila masisisi sapagkat may katotohanan na maraming mga Kristiyano na sa pangalan ng salita ng Diyos ay kanilang sinupil at inapi at minababa ang mga kababaihan. And many gender revolutionaries therefore blame Christianity for that. And many ignorant Christians, some hiding behind their theology, are guilty of creating and practicing this bias. And I have sometimes heard even Reformed Christians, Reformed preachers affirm this so-called superiority of the male creation. Now, I hope the past sessions and our conversations have already given us an affirmation that the Reformed Baptist faith believes in the equality of men and women and that we have been disabused from any idea of the superiority of one over the other. And sa huling pangangaral na ito, I was assigned to give a closing reflection. So just a few more gasping of breath and we will be done. And I would invite you to turn your Bibles with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3. And we will be beginning verse 14 until verse 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verses 14 to 17. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings or scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. That is the word of God. Now, you may be asking, why am I preaching to women from the pastoral letters? Well, the obvious answer, of course, is I was assigned the text. Uh, yun ang binigay sa akin na teksto. But there is a more pertinent answer to that. This text will really apply very much to women, although I maintain that the immediate application is to, is to Timothy as a man of God, as a minister, and as one who must train others to be themselves men of God. But nonetheless, I want to show that there is something in the text that applies to women at maaari nating pakinabangan sa ating pamumuhay bilang mga mananampalataya. Si Apostol Pablo ay pinapaniwalaan ng maraming mga dalubhasa. Ito na ang pinakahuling sinulat niya. Pagkaraan ng ilang linggo, siya ay papatayin bilang parusa ng imperyo ng Roma. At masasabi natin itong 2 Timothy ay mga habilin ni Apostol Pablo, mga bagay na mahalaga para sa kanyang panatilihin sa ministeryo ng salita ng Diyos. At dito ipinapakita niya kay Timoteo ano ang kanyang dapat na atupagin bilang isang tinawag sa ministeryo at isa sa pinakamahalagang habili niya kay Timoteo ay ipangaral mo ang salita ng Diyos. If there is one statement that is most succinct in the second letter to Timothy that we can summarize the whole letter by are the words, preach the word. Pero bago yan, itong teksto natin ng sinabi ni Pablo, ang ibig sabihin, merong pagkukunan si Pablo, uh, si Timoteo, ng kanyang ipangangaral. 
Saan siya kukuha ng kanyang ipangangaral at tuwing ang isang lalaki ng Diyos ay tatayo sa harap ng iglesia sa kanyang pulpito, ang kanyang pinapangaral dapat ay kung anong sinabi ni Pablo na ipangaral ni Timoteo. At ito ang salita. Pero nasaan ang salita ngayon? Ang salita para sa atin ngayon ay nandito sa kasulatan. Doon pa lang sa panahon ni Timoteo, halos lahat ng salita ay nasa kasulatan na bagamat hindi pa kumpleto at si, si Timoteo, hindi siya talaga lubos na pastor. Pastor siya, but more. He was an apostolic representative. Maaari siyang magsalita ng sinalita sa kanya ni Pablo. So he has something oral that he could preach from by saying, Apostle Paul sent me to tell you. Yan ang apostolic representative. But pastors today no longer are apostolic representatives. And therefore, their only source of preaching the word is no longer like an apostolic representative like Timothy who preached from the scriptures and also from an oral source like Paul. For the pastor today, there is only one source and that is the scriptures as the word of God. Yan ang pinapakita rito ni Apostol Pablo. Kaya nga ang immediate application, sabi niya sa verse 17, that the man of God may be thoroughly furnished and ready for every good work. No, yung salitang man of God, yan po'y technical label. Hindi natin yan maaring basta i-apply lamang sa mga kababaihan. Man of God is a title given to Moses, the man of God, given to Elijah, the man of God, and to Timothy as well as the man of God. The man of God is a title for the minister who labors in the word in the church. Kaya't hindi natin maaring ang kininito. Gayun pa man, that said, within the text that we have used and read, I will show that as part of the larger context of the letter, there is an application to women. May mayaangkup tayo sa mga kababaihan. Kaya't gusto kong tapusin ang ating conference na ito sa isang napakasimpleng mensahe lamang and my message is every Christian woman is able by God's grace to be a woman of the word. Ang bawat Kristiyanong babae sa biyaya ng Diyos ay kayang maging isang babae ng salita ng Diyos. Every Christian woman is able by God's grace to be a woman of the word. I'm not going to be presumptuous and imagine that every woman here is a Christian. If you are not a Christian, the message does not apply to you in a direct way. Pero maaring sa providensya ng Diyos din na lakarito upang makarinig ng mensahe at ang mensahe para sa iyo ay wala kang kakayahan sa iyong sarili na manindigan sa harap ng Diyos maliban sa ginawa ng Diyos na sa kanyang pagparito bilang nagkatawang tao na matay, na buhay na muli at sa pamamagitan noon ay ipinapangaral ang Ibanghelyo. Ang paanyaya sa iyo ay lumapit ka kay Heso Kristo. Kung nakarating ka rito sa propedensya ng Diyos, uh, sana'y umuwi ka na daladala mo ang mensahe ng Ebanghelyo at sumiksik sa iyong konsensya hanggang sa ikaw ay dumating sa punto ng pagsisisi sa kasalanan at manampalataya kay Heso Kristo. Ngunit para sa iyo na isang kristyanong babae na tinuruan ngayon lamang at sinanay sa inyong mga iglesia na maging mapagpasakop, huwag mong unawain niya na ang ibig sabihin ay wala kang kakayahan sa salita ng Diyos at huwag mo nang gawin pang ambisyon na maging mahusay, sanay at biasa sa salita ng Diyos. Yan ang gusto kong hamuni na attitude every Christian woman should aspire to be and is able to be by the grace of God to be a woman of the world. Now by that, I want to make a clear boundary. Women are not called to preach in the church. Hindi tinawag ang kababaihan na maging tagapangaral sa pagtitipo ng iglesia. The Word of God is authoritative on this. Uh, ginamit na ni Pastor Joel kanina, 1 Timothy 2.11, that he does not permit by apostolic authority that a woman should teach. 
with authority in the assembly of the church based on creation, based on the fall. Now, is that a violation of what I just profess to believe as the equality of men and women? No, no. Equality, yes. But get this, sisters. Equality does not mean interchangeability. That is the common fallacy. Yan ang karaniwang kamalian ngayon. Na kapag kapantay ang babae ng lalaki, dapat kung ano ang lalaki, ay ganun din ang magagawa ng babae. At maraming mga argumento ang ginagawa ngayon na ang kanilang kadahilanan ay dahil ganun ang lalaki. Eh, hindi naman ako papayag na magbuntis. Uh, <laughs> Hindi ko kaya. Kaya ng mga babae. Nandiyan ang kanilang lakas wala sa mga kalalakihan. So the point is that there is equality but that is not to be interpreted as interchangeability. And so the question is, in what areas then may a woman aspire to be a woman of the world where she, she can be useful for God? Sa ang mga larangan, maaring maging ang babae ay maging babae ng salita ng Diyos at maging kagamit-gamit sa Diyos. Tatlong larangan ang gusto kong sabihin in quick succession. First, as mother of her child, nanay ng kanyang anak. Pangalawa, as member of her church, miyembro ng kanyang iglesia. At pangatlo ay mission of her choice, mission na kanyang pinili. So kahit walang PowerPoint, sana yung alliteration ay medyo maritain ninyo. Mother of her child, member of her church, mission of her choice. Sa una ngayon, mother of her child. Mapansin nyo rito na Paul is commending Timothy. Why? Because from childhood, you have known the Holy Scriptures. Na yung salitang childhood dito, maraming salitang Grego na maaring ginamit ni Pablo para sa childhood, ang pinili niya ay yung talagang pinakabata. And sometimes the word brefo which he used can even mean the unborn. But the point is that this is the youngest possible a child can be and some translations even use during your infancy. So batang-bata ka pa lamang ay naturuan ka na ng mga banal na kasulatan. So how is this the case, you ask? Paano nangyari na bata pa lamang ay naturuan si Timotio ng salita ng Diyos sa Acts 16 ng kanyang katagpo si Pablo, siya ay isang binata ng masasabi natin. So kailan niya ito natutunan? Eh, mayroon tayo mga hints sa uh, bagong tipan. Even here in 2 Timothy, if you go back to chapter 1 verse 5, Apostle Paul makes reference to his grandmother Lois. And then his mother Eunice, in whom Paul commended their faith, which they taught to Timothy as a child. And in the case of Eunice, the mother of Timothy, this must have been a special challenge because she had a Greek husband. Yan ang alam natin sa Acts 16. Sa makatwid, wala siyang katulong na asawang lalaki na magpat magtuturo ng salita ng Diyos. Kung ang kanyang anak ay lalaki sa pagtuturo ng salita ng Diyos, kailangan gawin niya itong mag-isa. At ito ang kanyang ginawa sa tulong ng kanyang, maaaring sabihin natin, matanda ng nanay, ang kanyang nanay na si Lois, lola ni Tim Timothy, sa pamamagitan ng kanilang pagtuturo na palaki ang anak na sa Timotio sa katuruan ng salita ng Diyos. And let me say this, there is no more influential work for a woman than to teach the word to each of her children. Walang mas ma-influensya na gawa ang babae kaysa ituro sa kanyang mga anak ang salita ng Diyos. And let me make myself clear, I do not intend to demean those who are not mothers in their calling. Hindi ko minamaliit ang mga tinawag na hindi maging nanay sa kanilang buhay. But I am prepared to say 
that the most lasting work of women is as mothers teaching their children. Well, women have other works to do in the kingdom of God. Women have works to do in terms of teaching others and of doing their work that may give good testimony to the world in the corporate world or other areas where they can make an impact of their skills. Hindi ko tinatatwa ang galing ng mga babae. But mothers are conduits for the next generation. Sila ang daluyan sa mga susunod na mga henerasyon. No wonder that Paul tells Timothy to teach women this truth as the very issue they face in their vocation. Ang sabi ni Pablo kay Timothy yung mismo in regard to widows and karaniwan noon, widows became widows young and still marriageable because men married at about age 30 and believe it or not, longevity then was in your 40s. Eh, mga babae, karaniwang ipinapakasal na in their teens. So, widow na sila in their young or old 20s and still marriageable. And if they will marry, this is what Paul taught Timothy to teach women in 1 Timothy 5.14. Younger widows to marry, bear children, manage the house, to give the adversary no occasion for slander. Sa makatwid ang pananalitang mali, ang maling patutuo ng isang babaeng tinawag na maging nanay sa kanyang sambahayan ay kapag hindi niya natuturuan ang kanyang mga anak. This, I believe, is where the fight will be most fierce for women. And at no time is this more fought than now. Dito mahigpit ang paglalaban at pinaglalabanan ito ngayon sa maraming mga larangan. Mayroong pagmamababa sa isang babae na piniling manatili sa kanyang tahanan na gamitin ang kalakhan ng kanyang oras sa paghubog, pagsasanay ng kanyang mga anak sa salita ng Diyos. I mean, imagine a conversation of a group of women and one would share something of the excitement in the corporate world and another speaks of her rising income in business and then one mother very sheepishly with head bowed, almost in shame, is saying, I'm just a mother at home. Walang dapat ikahiya doon. Dapat mong itingala ang iyong sarili sapagkat tinawag ka sa pinakamahalaga na gawain kung saan ikaw ay tumitindig bilang kasangkapan ng Diyos sa pagbubuo ng susunod na inerasyon. And Proverbs 14 verse 1 says, A wise woman builds her house. Now in the Hebrew, woman there is the adjective. And you can translate that to mean Female wisdom builds her house. Eh, dyan natin sukatin, wag, hindi natin kailangan ikahiya na tayo ay nanay na nagpapalaki, naguhubog ng ating anak. And yet, today, books have been written. There are daily posts on social media egging women to revolt against the idea of being a mother at home. Did you earn your college degree just to clean house forever? They talk like there is no stress in their own office and they demean a mother to make her feel ashamed. No, you will not need to be ashamed, but with all dignity, own the vocation of guiding your children. Isipin nyo sa isang construction work, sino ang mataas dyan? Well, sa karaniwan, yung foreman, 
Isipin niyo ba yung foreman, nakikita niya yung kanya mga construction worker nakakakyat sa taas o nakakaingit naman, nakakataas sila. Ako nandito lang sa baba. Eh, hindi, siya ang mas mataas. Siya ang nakakakita ng the whole picture of what the building is going to be. Eh, yung mga umakit sa taas, may kaunting bahagi ng building silang gagawin but it is the foreman who knows how the building is going to look like. That's the mother. And career women, for all that they give to in their testimony to the kingdom of God, the mother has nothing to be ashamed of. Pero ang hamon ko sa iyo, upang maging ganyang kang nanay, accept the challenge of Bible knowledge to teach your children the scriptures. Eh, nakakatakot kung o may nanay ngang nananatili sa bahay para magturo. Heretic naman. Dahil hindi nag-aral ng salita ng Diyos. Una, we do not know of Eunice except what is told us in 2 Timothy 1.5, her name as Eunice and mother of Timothy and some other bits in Acts 16. But we owe a lot to her choice of anonymity so that she could, she could stay at home to teach young Timothy. During those trying days, perhaps, that she was molding Timothy in the scriptures of the Old Testament, perhaps she also asked questions to herself. Why ko I ginagawa ito? She would have had no idea that one day her child would become an apostolic representative by Paul to Ephesus to set things right. She would have had no idea that two letters of the New Testament will belong to the canon bearing the name of her child. And certainly one reason for that is because she chose to be a mother of her child. Now, what a tragedy it would be for a mother to have so much time with her child but nothing to teach. This is the reason why I advocate for women to read their Bible with discipline, read Bible references. Why? You may even exceed men in their knowledge and there's nothing wrong with that. Susanna Wesley had 19 children. Hindi yun ang gusto kong halimbawa para sa inyo. She had 19 children with her husband Samuel. Of those 19 children, 9 died in infancy. But of those left, we know of John Wesley and Charles Wesley. We still sing many of Charles Wesley's hymns. And John Wesley was used for a revival in England which would have gone to the rags like what happened to the French Revolution if not for the Methodist revival. But what Susanna Wesley would do is spend time for every child. Hindi lang basta magkakaroon sila ng... Oh, children's church hour tayo sabay-sabay no inisa-isa niya bawat isa may oras siya para turuan and thus we have the wesleys and many of their influences that's one way that's one area mother of her child the second area is member of her church bilang miyembro ng kanyang iglesia one personal description of Eunice in Acts 16.1 is that she was a Jewish woman who was a believer. In the New Testament, to be considered a believer requires that one has made a public confession. That means she was, we can assume, baptized. Then by indirect reference, Timothy is described as well spoken by the brothers at Lystra and Iconium. Now, what am I driving at? We can draw from this that Timothy and his mother spent their service as believers in Lystra or Iconium in a church. 
And that's how Eunice must have been encouraged in her church. As she served the church, she also served her son, Timothy. And let me say this, para sa lahat na kalalakihan, kapasturan, mga kababaihan, the church cannot flourish without women of the world spending Christian service. Ang iglesia ay hindi sasagana, hindi lalago kung wala ang mga babaeng may salita ng Diyos na naglilingkod sa kapatiran. We need women of the world in fellowship. And what a tremendous blessing the sisters are in fellowship. Their comforting gifts is uniquely female, if I may say. There is in women that ability to comfort that men just cannot duplicate. When Paul illustrates gentleness with brethren, his analogy in 1 Thessalonians 2.7 is that of a nursing mother taking care of her child. And that's how he talks of being gentle with brethren. The tragedy is that churches are being filled not with women of the world, but women who always have words of gossip. They know more about destroying the lives of others and perhaps know more about what's going on with the latest in showbiz than they know of the scriptures. We need women of the word in ministry as well. I do not mean the pastoral ministry, but there are many more ministries in the church. Women teach children. And by the way, such teaching should be from the Bible. Let me tell you, pastors, watch your Sunday school to your children. Without realizing it, you may have in your midst a nursery for legalism. Women are teaching the Bible stories, yes, but they end up with lessons of morality because they had not been taught. And you make sure that you have women in your Sunday school for children even who are women of the world. We need women who teach the word. Whether in Bible study or teaching opportunities. Did you know that in America today, there is a unique service business known as cuddling business? Cuddling, magpaalo. Because there are so much loneliness, especially brought about by the pandemic. They saw this opportunity to earn money by offering to cuddle the lonely. Kung nasa America ako may but extra na akong pagkakakitaan <laughs> but that's the point in our churches there are lonely men and women and the mere comforting presence of a sister is such a ministry but it it must be the ministry of a woman who was the word and my challenge therefore is Fill your heart with love for the Word and knowledge of the Word. Punuin mo ang puso mo ng pag-ibig sa salita ng Diyos at ng kaalaman ng salita ng Diyos. Do not retreat into the backward excuse that love for the Word and knowledge of the Word is a male privilege. That is to go back to an archaic past. In the Bible, you have the case of Priscilla and Aquila. Priscilla was the woman, and yet when they are spoken together, very often Priscilla was mentioned first before Aquila. And probably because of her better grasp of the scriptures. It happens especially when both of them taught Apollos, the more perfect way of God in Acts 18:26. Priscilla is mentioned first, which would mean that she was the more forward in teaching Apollos because she knew more than Aquila. 
So you do not do it to the point of becoming belligerent to your pastor na parang ikaw ang mas may alam. But it is knowledge supportive of the church for the building up of the body. And pastors should be willing to be corrected by women who have a grasp of the scriptures. I rejoice that I have been the object of correction by women in, the, in my church who study the word diligently. But beware, uh, it happens even to those in the pastoral ministry that you can have knowledge without love for the word. It happens to pastors. I've been teaching in GMA for 27 years. I've seen almost a hundred graduate. And I know what I, where off I speak, that a man can have all the knowledge of the scriptures and have none in his heart for any love for the word of God. And that can happen to women. And my challenge is for you to fill your heart with love for the word. Treat it like Job says, as my daily bread. A wife who loves the word will nag less. A member who loves the word will criticize less. Instead, she will be of such help to the ministries of the church and rel reliable when assigned in tasks and ministries and can be of help even to men who have a, a knowledge of the word, vast knowledge of the word even, but not love for the word. By consensus, the one considered the greatest Dutch Reformed theologian was Abraham Kuyper. He was once a liberal theologian who became a pastor of a church and he would preach liberal messages until one peasant woman came to him directly and told him, you are not giving us the bread of life. Imagine a peasant woman doing that to an, an accomplished theologian and Kuiper by the name. But Kuiper was awakened by God. And he was used, she was used to be for him to be converted. And Kuiper expressed his gratitude to this woman on his table. He had that woman's name, Petra Baltus. We do not know much about her. All that we know is that she had the courage and love for the word to approach a theologian to give them the, li the, the life-giving word. Be such a member of the church. And my final point is in mission of her choice. Sa mission na yung piliin. You re you re Paul here, what Paul says of the scriptures, it is good for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and instruction in righteousness. So teaching to know, reproof that tells you your error, correction that tells you what is right, and instruction in righteousness to tell you the way to go. And that instruction in righteousness is what you would live by as the standard of the Word of God. And the scriptures function as a pointer to what we are to do for the sake of righteousness. And I call it mission. There are Christian women who will be given opportunities of mission to choose. It is the woman's choice, but by that I do not mean singularly her choice. Her church will be involved. Her family will be involved, especially her husband will be involved. But she will know her gifts and opportunities that are being opened for her. Be it in office, career, how can she contribute to the advance of the kingdom of God? That's the mission of the church. That's the mission of every individual Christian. Not to earn money, not to accumulate income, but to be a peace 
in the superstructure of advancing and building up the church. But you see, only a woman of the world can look beyond her career and see a mission. Unfortunately, many are so short-sighted, they can only see their career. They can only see the next position in advance of where they are now. They can only see the means, maybe at the expense of others, so that they can get the promotion, as though getting that promotion is the be-all, end-all of being in their lives, forgetting you're a Christian. You do not live for this world. There is an eternity to live for. And you are to advance the church. And only a woman of the world can look beyond career to see mission. Do you know that female lions hunt more than males? Males are better hunters, but males just hunt to eat. And whatever is left, they then live to the rest of the tribe. That's the classic lion share. But females hunt because they need to feed their youngs. And though they are less skilled, they are more diligent because they have a mission. And I ask you, sister, do you have a mission? What is your mission? And my final challenge is do not waste the gifts and opportunities given by the Lord for you to have a mission. Huwag mong sayangin ang iyong mga kaloob at mga pagkakataon na ibinigay ng Panginoon para sa iyong mission. It takes a woman of the world to spot that mission where others only see promotion and advancement and more income and more fame and more celebrity status. A woman of God and a woman of the word will see a mission. And as a woman of God and as a woman, woman of the word, let this scripture be your guide as an instruction for righteousness. And time will fail me to mention women whom God has used in various ways. Elizabeth Bunyan. We only know of John Bunyan and his books, but he spent 12 years in jail. And those 12 years, Elizabeth Bunyan went to about every judge that could influence the case in order to liberate her husband. That became her mission. Eta Linneman was once a scholar in liberalism, used her scholarship in order to denigrate the scriptures, but one day she was converted and she used her scholarship in order to show the integrity of the synoptic gospels. Anne Bradstreet was raised and honed by Puritans and became the first female poet published among Americans. And I can go on and on of women God used. Why? Because they saw a mission. And why? Because they were women of the world. And that is what I ask of you. If only there were more women of the world, what churches we would have together. If there were more women of the world in our churches, there will be less gossip sessions and self-pity sessions and fault-finding sessions. There will be more of the sharing of the Word of God. I dream of such churches. And I pray that indeed women will be among those who will build such a church. If only we are women, you are women of the word let us pray
dakila naming Diyos sa aming mga baging ama. Nagpapasalamat kami sa hamon ng iyong salita na may kumpleto na kaming salita na nasa kasulatan. Hindi na namin kailangan ng mga tinig mula sa langit o ng mga buhay ng mga apostol o mga pangitain. Lahat ng salitang kailangan namin mula sa iyo ay nakasulat na at walang anumang katwira ng sino man na hindi maging disiplinado sa pag-aaral, sa pagpupuspos ng aming isip ng iyong salita. At kung meron man mga tinatawag ka na maging mga pastor ng mga iglesia, hindi nangangahuluga na ang iba ay magwawalang bahala sa iyong salita. Naway maging hamon ito sa mga kababaihan na tinawag mo na maging mga puspusin din ng salita ng Diyos. Loobin mo na maging mga ina sila ng kanilang mga anak na nagtuturo ng iyong salita at nagtuturo ng isang balang araw ay kakasangkapanin mo sa susunod na generasyon. Maging mga miyembro sila ng mga iglesia na iyong kinakasangkapan sa aming pag-uugnayan, sa mga paglilingkod, sa mga ministeryo na ginagamit ang salita na pumupuspo sa kanilang isip na way magkaroon sila ng pag-ibig sa iyong salita, hindi lamang ng kaalaman at bawat isa sana ay magkaroon ng kanyang misyon na pagbibigyan ng kanyang lubos na lakas at enerhiya upang maging lingkod mo sa pagsulong ng iyong kaharian. Father, we aspire to be churches where your glory is manifested and it will flourish only not just with men but with men and women who are all lovers of your word and who apply your word to their lives and to their calling. Grant us such churches for you have designed that your kingdom will advance through the weakness of the churches of this world. So grant, Lord, that our churches may be composed of men and women of the world to your glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.